Welcome to another edition of The Hard Count. I'm Michael Lee Mom, and I recently had a wonderful interview with Gulliver Preps kicker Will Betridge. Betridge is a member of the 2022 class and currently stands at 5 foot 11 inches and 165 pounds. Betridge is a five-star kicker, according to Corn Blue Kicking and uh, Cole's Kicking. He's also ranked number one, the number one kicker in America by Corn Blue Kicking and the number five by Cole's. As of this episode's release, Betridge has received an offer from FIU, and we talk a little about that and more on this episode. All right, everyone, here is Will Betridge. Hope you guys enjoy this one. Started. So you are a five-star kicker, five-star out of Miami, Florida. Uh, first off, congratulations on that rating. That's an unbelievable rating, ranked number one in your class. Uh, obviously, you just received the offer from FIU, and I'm not sure where you are in talks with uh, South Carolina or not. How is your uh, recruitment going so far and kind of your conversations going so far? I think it's it's going a lot better than I assumed. Um, I knew being a kicker that, you know, recruiting is always like all these schools recruit kickers last you know, that's just part of the game. And I came in thinking, yeah, September 1st, when we're allowed to talk, I, I was expecting a few schools to reach out. But now I have weekly calls with um, coaches at LSU, Rice, UVA. And that FIU offer, I think, kind of pushed it out there, knowing that all the other schools saw it and be like, oh, he's, schools are actually interested. So I think that kind of pushed my name out there a little more. And it's it's been going really good just – being on the phone with a bunch of coaches weekly, just getting my name out there more and just building, building relationships. I think that's, that's the biggest part about being a kicker because they really only offer one kicker every two years. It's not like all these, these other positions where they have multiple offers for mul- every position every year. So I just know I have to build relationships with the coaching staffs and just seeing what, seeing what fits best, for, what fits best for me in the long run. Awesome, awesome. So I see there you were recruited by uh, Drew Davis, uh, with a recruiter for FIU. Um, so just kind of going to give you a breakdown here. So in terms of how you were recruited, did you have a conversation with him? Did you have a conversation with the head coach of FIU? Um, what kind of process kind of went down involving you and in getting recruited by FIU? So um, I got my offer um, January of my sophomore year. So that was before I was allowed to have contact really with any, with any coaches. So I was the that FIU came into my school under prep and they talked to my head coach about me and they showed them my film and everything. And then I got a text from my head coach later that night and said, Hey, we would like to congrats, um, give you the congrats. Um, FIU's offered you a full scholarship. So, I mean, maybe I was just in complete shock. Like I knew it was, it was super early as a kicker to get a full ride my sophomore year and then once I posted the offer on Twitter then then the coach Drew Davis the first time I ever spoke to him was after the offer after I posted it and he just said big congrats Will like um, we're super honored to give you the offer we were pleased to watch your film and everything and then once September 1st starts we building a relationship that we couldn't do before my sophomore year so just it kind of really started September 1st, as I said before, once they can recruit me like legally, basically. So that's when I started building a relationship even more. Right, right. Obviously going through that process there. And I can see also that you have pinned on your Twitter account. You have a lot of people following you, some big names out there. And you have uh, the practice film I wanted to call uh, attention to, obviously, because it's pinned from September 3rd. You have two kicks from 55 yards, 55 plus yards. You have um, actually multiple from 55, uh, 55 plus yards. You have two from 55, one from 57, 60, 62, and 64 yards. Uh, and then practice kicks. And obviously you have that 75 uh, yard kickoff. And obviously that's not necessarily in the game, but that says a lot about uh, obviously your leg in terms of, in terms of how strong it is. Um, so tell me a little about, about how you've developed at Gulliver prep into kind of the player that you are now. So I, I think the coaches at Gulliver prep do a great job of just turning young men, young, young, young kids into men. And I knew when I came in my freshman year, I knew I knew this is what I wanted to do in the long run. So I came in there competing for the starting job as a freshman and I beat out a junior that year. So once that happened, I knew that like like it's starting and I have to take every game seriously, every rep seriously because I knew there's someone someone behind me. So one bad rep, one bad game and my spot's taken. So I just that just motivates me just to work harder and everything and then I came out the my first varsity game as a freshman, and 
I hit a 46 yarder to send it to overtime. So I think that that was just a, a big game just to get get under me. And now I just keep growing every day. And it was a big uh, it was a big difference moving um, this year, junior year, to kicking all my field goals off the ground because I know you can kick off a block in high school, but I want to play at the next level, and that's kicking off the grounds in game. So I feel like it's big that I'm a junior and I can kick 64, 60, 62 off the ground, and I feel like that's what that that's what uh, pushes me out there more than other kids because I'm already at that level. Yeah, and one of the great things that I hear um, through the social media trends and obviously through the football world is the term "kickers are people too." And obviously, you talk a lot about um, a lot of people talk about the individual kickers going from you know just being soccer kids to being um, individuals on the practice squad being called up, and then they have people like you who are um, you know great at their craft, phenomenal at their craft, and have developed uh, over the years into uh, really star kickers that big name schools are kind of looking at. In terms of how you've gone from I'd say as a young kid to being kind of the young man that you are now. Um, who has kind of influenced you the most involving either your coaching staff or your parents or your family? Which one would you say kind of has influenced you the most in that regard in terms of your playing career? I would say my parents for sure. And then my old, my old Pop Warner football coach, Coach Cannon. And they're, he, they're the, their coaching staff at my Palmetto Bay Broncos. That's where I played Pop Warner football. They're the ones who saw me out in the soccer field one day playing soccer, practicing, and they came up to me and my dad after and asked, um, we need a kicker for our 80-pound football team. This was about, I don't know, it was a long time ago. And I was like, sure, I'll give it a try. I was super committed to soccer back then, and I had one lesson, and I kicked one to the coaches, and then it was done. Quit soccer the next week, and that's when the whole football thing started. And ever since then, I, I haven't let it down, and – I was like my parents just taking me to all these camps around the country because I know that's super difficult for them just to take time out of their day to just want want to see me winning and that they can just take me to places like Georgia, Tennessee, Orlando, just all around the country just to get my name out there even more. And they really influenced me because they always want the best for me and they just make sure that I'm in the best situation possible. And I just I really can't thank them enough. Right, right. That's very nice. And obviously you come from, as I mentioned before, you come from Miami and Florida, I'm sure you as well know, um, is the highest recruited state um, for football in the United States as of right now, having that record again um, for the um, multiple years in a row. Um, And you kind of talked a lot about how you've kind of come up into becoming this five star there are a lot of kids out there that are, you know, two star, three star, four star who are trying to get their name out there. Obviously, you've done a very good job of getting your name out there with um, the accolades that you've won and obviously your high GPA. So what advice would you give to kids in regards who are trying to get their name out there and don't necessarily have the views or offers yet? I would think the first thing at most is never give up because no matter what situation you're in, if you're a backup and there's a starter ahead of you, it just takes one injury to that starter and you have to be ready to play in an instant and one good play, one good game gets you film and that film will blow you up. Like you just have to take everything day by day and you just got to keep working on and off the fields in the weight room, in the classroom, because especially grades, if you get those grades, coaches will put you over. a, A coach would rather take a kid with a higher GPA who's a little less on the fields than a kid who has a bad GPA and is a little more on the field because that boosts up them as a program as well. So if you have your grades in the classroom and you can perform on the field, colleges will know who you are. And you just got to be, be on top of them, send them your film on Twitter, find their, find their phone numbers, reach out to them any possible way. And you just don't get, don't get discouraged if a coach doesn't reach out back to you. That's just that's just another person you need to prove wrong when, when you make it. And it's all it takes is one coach. All it takes is one school to believe in you. And and that's where greatness could come. Awesome. Awesome. Great advice there, Will. And I generally ask this as kind of a tongue in cheek, although I'm sure you probably will have, uh, from what I've seen, you probably will have a lot of success going from the college level. Um, but I do, we did want to ask this cause I just, for tongue in cheek, I asked kids, uh, if you were to get drafted by an NFL team, what'd be your preferred team to get drafted by? I'm going to ask you the same thing. What would be the preferred team you, you would want to get drafted by assuming your dreams are realized? 
I would say I would say the New York Giants. New York Giants. Um, yeah, I was I was born in New York, so I think that that really pushes them up there. I watch all their games and everything. My dad's a big fan, so I think if I had to pick a team to get drafted by, I think it for sure be the Giants. All right, awesome, awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on, Will. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, everyone, that was Will Betridge out of Gulliver Prep High School in Miami, Florida. If you'd like to contact Will, his Twitter account is at Will underscore Betridge, and I'll be sure to uh, post his huddle link below as well. If you'd like to contact me, my Twitter account is at Imami Michael, and my brand new Instagram page is at the hard count with Michael Imami. Also, be sure to uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel as well for updates and uh, have your parents check out my Facebook page as well at the uh, hard count with Michael Imami. Special thanks to uh, Will for coming on. He's definitely a D1 caliber kicker, and I really enjoyed having him on this episode. He's going to have a terrific college career, I believe, wherever he goes, and I wish him the best. All right, everybody, thanks so much for listening to this episode. This has been The Hard Count. Do you have what it takes to go D1?